today we're going to actually start with some good news. Good. Maybe. <laughs> I'm, we're almost there. Uh, a new virus cases, new virus cases have begun to slow in several U.S. cities where Omicron first hit. Thank goodness. But Dr. Coley, does this mean that we've hit peak Omicron? And do you think that we'll start to see cases going back down, please? Ladies, happy Friday, and Friday brings us good news. So in fact, yes, many medical experts are saying that countries like the UK, South Africa may have already crossed their peak. We are not yet at our peak nationally, but there are cities that are starting to see cases go down or seeing the rate of growth go down. So I think we're really, really, really close. We just have to wait for it. Thank goodness. Yeah, thank you for that. You say, wait, I need like a timeline. Is this yeah. happening like sure. next week? Is it going to be a month? Are we, yeah. <laughs> Are we all getting Omicron? Does that mean that this peak means that it's like, you know, for real, for real this time? No, great question, Erica. So girl, you have to wait about two to four weeks is what I would say. Do not get Omicron in the meantime, if you can avoid it. I know you've just recovered and thankfully looking beautiful and doing well, but for the rest of us, do not get it if you if you don't have to, because it is possible that you could avoid it as the number of cases starts to go down. So I love to use a snow analogy because I love the winter and I love snow. But basically, you know, we were in the in the thick of the snowstorm. It was really, really, really snowing out there. And now the rate of snowing has gone down, but we're not quite ready to leave our house yet. We gotta wait till tomorrow morning when the sun comes out, then we can dig out from the snow. Here comes the sun. Doo, 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 doo. Thank you for that. It was beautiful. I do want to um, <laughs> talk about this. It's really, really bugging me out. But yesterday, the Supreme Court, if you didn't know, blocked the president's vaccine mandate for large businesses. They did allow it for healthcare workers. So, Dr. Coley, from a very specific medical perspective, I just wanted to know what you thought of the decision. Well, guys, I have to say the medical part makes a ton of sense. I mean, that's brilliant, right? When you go to the hospital for your stroke or your cancer treatment or your heart attack, the last thing you want to do is to catch COVID okay. from someone on your healthcare team who may not know that they're infected. And I've personally seen that happen to a number of patients. Mm. So I'm thrilled that this is happening on a system-wide level. But it really upsets me. Actually, I'm frankly angry. And I really just you know, don't understand the logic behind not applying the same science to a large employer organization with over 100 employees where we know that COVID spreads from person to person. So how in the world does it make any sense to say, oh yeah, it's good for hospitals to do that, but not for other workplaces. And I think all they've done is made our lives more difficult. Um, and I'm really upset about it. But how, how do you guys feel? Do you think that this is a reasonable thing to do or? I think it will prolong the virus. It will just continue to prolong the virus. And I just want anything to hasten the end of the virus, simply I'm, put. I'm exactly with Tori. What about you, Erica? But Tori, you're all about like... No, go ahead, Dr. Coley. I was just gonna say Tori is all about legal rights and making sure we're protecting people's legal rights. Do you think we're violating their rights by asking them to get vaccines. And Erica, I want your opinion as well. Not only is there a precedent from 1905, Jackson versus Massachusetts, that already said no. We already have this with polio, diphtheria, going yellow fever if you have to go across. Vaccine mandates are ruled constitutional. It has been long in our history's past. George Washington inoculated his group of people and his soldiers with uh, smallpox inoculation and quarantined people. So I find it completely inane, just like you said. Sorry. The loud no, well, thank you for that history lesson. It's wonderful. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, facts. <laughs> exactly. So then I went, uh, you know what? I should have copied off of Tori on my history test. Because <laughs> yeah, was history was not my thing. I'm a science person. <laughs> I know. doubt that, Dr. Coley. I'm sure you had A pluses yeah. in every subject. I do. But what effect do you think, Dr. Coley, it would have had on the pandemic if they did indeed allow the vaccine mandate to go through? A huge effect, guys. You've already seen the effect of the vaccines and just, a, you know, one short year getting our lives back to normal, making it less severe. As Tori said, not only would it have shortened the duration of this pain that we're all having to go through with the masks and the mitigation measures, but I actually believe that this decision has cost human lives. Because for every million cases that you have of the infection, you're going to have some percentage end up like our poor Eric, end up losing their lives, end up in the ICU, end up with long-term disability. And this sort of a, what I think is a bit of a callous decision and definitely not scientifically supported is going to pay the price of human lives. Wow.
Wow. Well said, Dr. Coley. Um, okay, we always want to in involve our viewers, and a lot of our viewers are asking, what type of mask is the best mask for Omicron specifically? Is it time to ditch that cloth and paper mask? And also, another viewer asked the difference between the N95 and the KN95 masks. Yeah, so definitely get rid of those cloth masks. I don't want to see any of them on any of your pretty faces from now on. So the, the least you can do is the surgical mask. But as you know, it's thin and it's loose fitting. So this is the bare minimum. And this is what I might use if I'm walking around outside in the park, for example. But if I'm going inside a grocery store, I'm going to get the KN95, which is thicker. And it has a material that actually has better filtration capacity and it fits tighter to my face easier to wear because it goes around the year but the most the best mask the tesla of the masks that i like to call it is the n95 this is what doctors wear when they go in to see patients that have tuberculosis for oh, example wow, yeah. because not only is it thicker the shape of it actually makes sure that it kind of protects your your nose and your mouth it's got straps that fit around your head so it's really nice tight fit and it has little particles in it that are charged with electrostatic properties that actually trap virus particles wow. so where i wear this when i see patients and this is the best one in terms of protection good to know i should have cheated on her for science well, <laughs> sorry go ahead yeah let's talk about the <laughs> kn95 masks because people don't know how long they should be wearing them before they throw them out and are they washable yeah, you know, so we've been saying single use only, but I know that that's not particularly practical, especially because they can get expensive. If you're wearing an N95, it can be a couple of dollars. So what I like to do, guys, is to put it on the inside and then put, uh, you know, surgical mask on top that I can sort of throw out every day. And so I'm not bringing in a dirty surgical mask and putting it back on my face, um, but you can't wash them. You cannot wash them because it's going to degrade the material, affect the properties and affect the fit. So what I would say is wear it maybe four or five times up to a week, depending on whether or not you think it starts to feel a little funky to you at some point <laughs> or the elastics getting a little too stretched or whatever. But don't wear it longer than that because you're going to start to lose some of the protective benefits. Great information. Before we let you go, Dr. Coley, I saw this new study and I have to ask you about it. It found that women are 32 percent more likely to die after an operation if their surgeon is male. Can you tell me more about this and what should some of our women viewers right now do when picking their doctors? So, you know, I want to give you my perspective as a woman, and then I want to give you my perspective as a physician. So this is an observational study where we looked at the observed, just how people do with what type of patient gender and what type of physician gender. And what we found is when then there's a discordance between the patient specifically being female and the, and the doctor being male, they might do a little worse. But to me, guys, this doesn't tell me uh, as a physician that my are, you know, less uh, experts are more inefficient at what they do or they're not doing their job right. What it tells me is that and reminds me is that the connection to the patient is probably one of the most important things in terms of determining their outcome. So I feel like this is more a reflection of how connected the patient feels to the physician, how comfortable they're asking questions. And, and as a female cardiologist, I often get women coming to me and saying, I want another woman mm. because women understand women a little better. But how do you guys react to this? Do you think it'll affect the gender of the doctor that you might pick? I just naturally gravitate I, towards female doctors. Mm. That's just me. Erica, go ahead. Sorry. Me too. I think that the same logic can be applied even for race. Yes. You know, I mean, we've been I having agree. this conversation Maternity. about the disparity in health care. And I think that this is just another layer of that same conversation. Well said, Erica. Dr. Coley, thank you. It's so true. We appreciate Dr. Coley. Have a great weekend. I hope you're not working, but you probably are. <laughs> if you guys have a question you want answered by Dr. Coley, write us on social media. You can also email info at dailyblastlive.com. Thank you again, Dr. Coley.